Hi, it's Rich Bennett from the uh, Canadian Tank Museum. I'm the vehicle section director here, and uh, we're located in Oshawa, Ontario, Canada. And today we're going to talk about our T72 project. And we've got an issue with the oil pump. It kind of failed in service, so uh, it necessitated pulling a pack that we've never pulled before. It's a pretty interesting engine. It's all aluminum. It's roughly about 38 liters, produces about 780 horsepower. It's a multi-fuel type engine, big supercharger on the front. Uh, we're going to go over a couple of the components. Basically, what we need to do on this engine is get into the lower crankcase half, which is where the oil pump is located. Uh, see if we can actually fix it. If we can't fix it, uh, we've got a monument outside that actually has another engine in it. So we'll be looking at its viability to see if we can uh, bring the two together and make sure they work. So it's quite interesting engine. It, at its time, it shared a lot of common stuff with a lot of com a lot of those engines back in the day, like the Centurion engine. Just looking at the Centurion engine, it has very similar stuff. These are uh, the shafts where the cam drive actually goes. It's a tube where the drive shaft goes up into the cam sections up here. It's an overhead cam unit. So a lot of the designs seem to be fairly common. Now this one being a Russian unit, they really like their air starters. So what you see first glance is this big unit here. This is actually the air starter motor and it's supplied by air through the center. It's timed to the engine and it, del it delivers air to each cylinder through these lines to a little check valve that's in behind here under the intake. And since it's timed, you get the air into the cylinder to actually start just going and just picks it up really quick. Uh, uses about, likes to be up around uh, seven, eight bar, 12 bar of pressure it turns it very effectively it starts it very quickly uh, these things probably don't even do more than a revolution and a half and they're running on the air starter the electric start being a 48 volt starter takes a little bit longer still effective but when you're sitting there thinking about batteries cold weather all that kind of stuff the air start is definitely the way to go it just goes a lot quicker now this engine is in several pieces a lot of the stuff in the center here is all related to fuel so your fuel filters your injection pump all your fuel supply and return lines are on the top uh, both your cams for exhaust and intake cams are in each cylinder head you've also got the cylinders themselves it's a block assembly so it's all components all put back together you got a head section with the inspection covers the valve covers then you got the the block section that has the piston inside of it you have an upper crankcase section and a lower crankcase section, which comprises the oil sump, uh, what we would call the oil pan. It's just a bigger unit, but very complicated. A lot of moving parts on this engine. There's a lot of stuff. There's coolant lines, oil lines, oil lines that supply the lower crankcase half, coolant supplies to the upper crankcase half. It's just very, very complicated, a lot of stuff. In behind here, this is an oil distribution block. In behind this block, you have the end of the crank. The crank has a series of bevel gears that will drive a number of pieces of equipment. Shaft comes up to drive your air starter. A shaft comes up to drive your injection pump unit in the back. The shaft goes out to supply your tachometer. Shaft for the fuel pump. Shaft for an oil scavenger pump, which is on a common shaft with the, uh, the fuel pump. And on the other side, you have a coolant pump. So it's all shaft driven off the end of the crank. There's no there's no pieces and parts that you won't miss. It's, it's all internal. So we're talking about trying to take this stuff apart. And when we want to take this apart, there's a number of hoses that are going to have to come off. They're all going to have to be documented. We're all trying to find English literature instructions on how to get this stuff apart. Being that complicated, and we've never done it before, we're reaching out to uh, a couple of our friends that have done it before and looking for tips and tricks. And we're moving forward with that. But it's going to be a, a project that's going to be in the works for quite some time so stay tuned because there will be more videos on it we're hoping to get our other engine out onto another frame we're going to try and make a stand that we can actually run it on the stand which involves getting a lube pump getting a lube reservoir started a whole bunch of stuff hooked up before we can actually test run it but that's the game plan check the viability of this engine check the viability of our monument engine get one of them running make sure it's good so that we can get it back in and get our tank back in service a lot of work, but it's something that we need to do for an operational tank museum. These things happen. Uh, they've been in service for a long time. When we get them, we don't know the history. Some people take care of them better than others. This one just had some issues with sludge in the oiling system. 
the oil pump eventually failed uh, due to bearing clearances on its own pump assembly. It's a gear pump assembly with bushing bearings and they kind of final, finally warned because of the stuff that was in the system. And that's what caused this issue of a broken oil pump drive shaft, which necessitated pulling the engine. So stay tuned, there's gonna be more on this. Now we do have a great opportunity at this point in time, being our maintenance season, we have a number of engines out. So we're gonna take a walk around. We're gonna look at each engine that we do have out. I'll say a little blurb on it, just to give you a little heads up. And uh, there's gonna be more to follow on these projects as the winter uh, continues. So stay tuned.